Memphis. Today's special is Memphis Soul Suit. Listen to the band move, watch the people groove, y'all. Give me about a half a teacup of bass. Hey everybody, my name's Brad Helene. I'm a bass player from Boston, Massachusetts, and welcome to our series today of the roots of electric bass. Some of the roots, anyway. I want to make this clear, this isn't a bass lesson or a tutorial. It's just me talking about my process as an artist and a bass player and some of the things that I love and have enhanced my playing and inspired me. Let's start with the history of American music. And we'll start with Louis Armstrong, even though the history of American music goes way before that. But let's talk about Louis. So there's Louis Armstrong, there's Duke Ellington, there's Nat Cole, Ray Charles, all American music. Then there's all the blues guys. Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, Sonny Boy Williamson, Freddie, Beebe, Albert King, Little Milton, Johnny Watson, T-Bone Walker, Guitar Slim. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. There's all the small jazz group stuff that was on Blue Note and Riverside. That's a huge list, too huge to mention. All of this is American music. The punk rock era that happened, which was a beautiful time for music. The Ramones, The Talking Heads, Blondie, Television, a lot of other groups from that era. Super important. But what we're going to be talking about today is 1960s and early 70s bass players that were from the R&B and soul genre. So we're going to talk about four bass players in particular, James Jamerson, Tommy Codbill, David Hood, and Duck Dunn. Now there's other bass players, Carol Kay, Ronnie Baker, Chuck Rainey, Gerald Jamont, Joseph Lucky Scott. Excuse me if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm sure I am, because there's more, there's a lot more. But we're gonna focus on those four, the four that I mentioned, Jamerson, Cogbill, Hood, and Dunn today. When I was a kid growing up and listening to music in my teens, you know, first the Beatles in 1964 when I was seven, but I started playing bass shortly after that and I was wondering, you know, how, where's this coming from? All this influence, this sound. Uh, just like when I heard the Beatles and the Stones and, I, I, and other British invasion groups and some American groups like Paul Butterfield, where was this blues influence coming from? And I found out later about Muddy and Howlin' and Wolf and Sonny Boy and uh, I think it's really important as an artist to go to the roots of the music and, and learn about it and find out about it, find out where it came from. It's an important part of not just our heritage, but also our, our artistry. So when I heard bass players like Carl Radel, who played with Clapton for years, and it was in Derek and the Dominoes, and played with Delaney and Bonnie, and Leon Russell, Joe Cocker, and then later John Paul Jones from Zeppelin, Dee Murray from Elton John's band, Alan Spenner from the Grease band, Joe Cocker, Andy Frazier from Free. These bass players all had something in common, and I was like, what is it? that makes this sound and the rhythmical propulsion that they had and the note choices. And you know what it was? It was James Jamerson. Jamerson influenced everybody, and he still does to this day. And the other three bass players that we're gonna talk about today are influenced by Jamerson, but they also had their own take on his genius. Now, Jamerson took something from a very simple bass approach and turned it into a whole nother style of his rhythmic variations and all of the different things that propel the song. So all of these bass players we're talking about today, Jamerson, Cogbill, Hood, and Dunn, they were all session guys. They played live some, some more than others, but mostly session guys, especially early on in their careers. And they were all 
musicians and house bands at various studios uh, that also freelanced, but for the most part, they, they worked out of one particular studio. So we're gonna start with James Jamerson here. Now, Jamerson was based out of Detroit. He, he played with all, everybody, all the artists on Motown. There were a couple other bass players, Bob Babbitt, a few others, but mostly it was Jamerson. They would actually hold sessions for him if bands were on the road. He rarely toured. I heard that he would go out with Smokey Robinson and later on he toured with Marvin Gaye, but for the most part, he was, he was always there. So we're gonna start off with James Jamerson doing Marvin Gaye's version of I Heard It Through the Grapevine. There's many Jamerson lines to pick from, choose from, and I, I transcribed many last year in 2020, but this is the one that we are gonna focus on today. So this is I Heard It Through the Grapevine by James Jamerson. wasn't some great bass playing right there. James Jamerson, what a genius. I forgot to mention too, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, the bass player in the clip that we saw that started this little dock off here was uh, Jerry Dumont playing with King Curtis and the Kingpins doing Memphis Soul Stew. So anyway, the next bass player we're gonna talk about is Tommy Cogbill. First of all, he's my favorite. He's my favorite out of my favorite electric bass player of all time. And that's why he's gonna get a special treatment of how many songs? Five songs. We're gonna do five songs by Tommy today. He was the house bass player. It was also a jazz guitar player when he started, but he was the house bass player at American Studios in Memphis. And he played with everybody there. Just go down the list. Elvis Presley, The Box Tops, 
Dusty Springfield, Bobby Womack, Aretha, on and on and on. Every session that came through there, if he wasn't playing bass, Mike Leach was playing, but mostly it was Tommy playing on almost everything. He was just the man. So we're gonna look at three songs in a row right now from Bobby Womack. Bobby Womack was a great singer, songwriter, guitar player. He was uh, originally in a band called The Valentinos and they he wrote It's All Over Now, which you're probably familiar with. The Stones covered it and so did Rod Stewart. Then he went out on his own. And still as a songwriter, he wrote I'm a Midnight Mover for Wilson Pickett. He wrote many songs. And the three songs we're gonna look at now are all Bobby Womack originals featuring Tommy Coggle on bass, all cut at American Studios in Memphis. We're going to look at More Than I Can Stand, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, and It's Gonna Rain. So enjoy. <laughs>
love all those songs. Three great songs there. The next clip we're going to look at of Tommy, as I said, a lot of these guys did freelance and move around and Tommy, probably more than anybody, was very in demand, not only at uh, American Studios, but also he worked in Muscle Shoals and he worked in New York a lot. And he was brought in on a lot of different sessions just because his expertise was so great. So the next track we're going to look at is a song off of Lady Soul, which is the Aretha Franklin record that has Chain of Fools on it. By the way, Tommy played on Respect, Do Right Woman, Baby I Love You, Since You've Been Gone, Baby Baby Sweet Baby. He played on so many of Aretha's hits, but we're going to look at this tune today called Come Back Baby. And the first thing we're going to look at before me playing along to the track is we're going to show a little clip of them in the studio hanging out, and you can tell that Tommy's the go-to guy. He's kind of counting the song off a little bit on his leg. He, he was known as a go-to guy. Bass players are kind of known as go-to guys. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look at that clip and then we'll come back to Come Back Baby. Working with me at every recording session is engineer Tom Dowd and Jerry Wexler. We do head arrangements. We don't work with charts because we feel that inhibits the possibility for freshness and spontaneity. We build the arrangements around the reefer's conceptions. It's her musical approach, the way she lines out a song, particularly the way she accompanies herself on piano. Second break, you make this the first and the second beat. The third time, you make the first, second, and third beat. Uh, 
it's a matter of feeling and it's also a matter of sound. Uh, a lot of times where the band was right, I felt I was wrong or not giving or living my lyric enough. So we keep going over takes until we're both, you know, together. Until you smile. When you smile, you know you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us meet Miss Aretha Franklin. <laughs> That's some seriously creative gospel boogaloo influenced bass playing or what. I just love those lines he plays in that tune. So great. So groove in such a deep pocket. Great note choices, great tone. Everything about it is just, and swings like crazy. So yeah, Tommy, just, just a killer bass player. I just want to say that, you know, I, I transcribed almost 60 lines of his because, I, as I said earlier, he is my favorite electric bassist during the initial lockdown in 2020. As I was doing this series and I was posting almost daily on Facebook, a fellow named Mark Chapman reached out to me who worked with Tommy and knew him in the 80s when Tommy was working out of Nashville. Just liked what I was doing and was very supportive and we traded a lot of stories. And he also made an introduction for me with Tommy's daughter, Sharon Cogbill, and I ended up talking to her on the phone a number of times. And we had some really nice conversation. I actually talked to Tommy's widow as well. So it was really just a great experience. And as I mentioned before, Tommy, he moved around a lot. He was seriously in demand. A lot of these bass players freelanced, but Tommy, probably more than anybody else, everybody wanted him because he was just so good. And he was also a real go-to guy in the studio. He produced a lot of songs, including this next one that we're going to be looking at. Everlasting Love by Carl Carlton. It was recorded at the Creative Workshop in Berry Hill, Tennessee. So this is toward the end of Tommy's career here. He also co-produced this track. Tommy, you know, had a lot of production shops. There's another reason why he was really in demand. He produced Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. Besides playing bass on it, he also produced it. He was in demand. He played everywhere. He was up in New York. That Comeback Baby clip was cut at Atlantic Studios in New York. And he worked out of fame down in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and he, he worked all over the place. So this next tune is the last tune by Tommy called Everlasting Love, as I said, by Carl Carlton. Now Tommy played this with a pick on the recording, but I played it with my fingers just because 
I wanted to play all those great 16th notes with my fingers and have some fun doing it that way. Another great bass line and hope you enjoy it. Mr. Tommy Cogdell on Carl Carlton's Everlasting Love. As I said before, Tommy also co-produced that track. The next bassist we're going to talk about is David Hood, who was the house bassist at Fame and also Muscle Shoals. He started at Fame with Rick Hall and then later the Swampers, which was David and all the rest of the guys, Roger Hawkins, Jimmy Johnson, Barry Beckett, all those guys, they left and started their own studio just called Muscle Shoals. So he played on so many tracks. I mean, the list is like, just look them up. Etta James, it's just, the list is really, really long. The first tune that we're gonna look at by David is a Clarence Carter song called Take It Off Him and Put It On Me, which was done at Fame before the Swampers moved to Muscle Shoals. And it's just a killer bass line. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the back end of it. Thank you. 
Line. A good friend of mine, David Hull from Boston, who used to play with Buddy Miles, used to play that song with Buddy when he was a teenager. David just ripped it up, had his own spin on it, and it was just killer. You can actually find it on YouTube if you put in Buddy Miles in Finland. I think it's Helsinki they're playing. But I'm gonna show you just what to do. So take it all down and put it all up. There's David. Maybe he's 19 or 20 in the clip, just absolutely killing it. But anyway, getting back to David Hood, he played with everybody. Boz Skaggs, Bob Seger, he played with Traffic. A lot of the rock bands were really enamored by the sound that came out of Muscle Shoals. Rod Stewart ended up recording there. The Stones did Sticky Fingers there. Bob Seger did uh, a lot of Night Moves there. And a lot of different rock acts recorded there and, and sought out the expertise of the Swampers. So David played with a lot of people. And as I said, ended up actually touring with Traffic on the uh, Shootout at the Fantasy Factory record and tour. The next song that we're gonna look at by David is a song that you probably all know by the band called The Wait. And it's Aretha Franklin's rendition off of a record called This Girl's In Love With You. And this was done at Atlantic Studios with uh, Mr. Tom Dowd and David just playing killer on it. There's also a slide guitar player that you, you might recognize him. <laughs> He's pretty recognizable. But anyway, so this is David Hood playing bass on Aretha's version of The Wait. Shut my 
Just great playing by David Hood on that classic rendition of The Weight. You really got to check these guys out, all of them. They all have amazing discographies. And the man that we're going to close this special with is Mr. Duck Dunn, whose discography is absolutely incredible. He was the house bassist at Stax in the early part when they were recording all the hits with Wilson Pickett, Sam and Dave, Otis Redding, Eddie Floyd, Isaac Hayes, the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, just tons of artists. And a lot of artists, once again, like as I said about Muscle Shoals, where rock artists came in, all the rock guys and gals, they were all seeking these people out because the sound and the groove was so deep. So we're going to look at a tune here by one of my biggest influences, because as I mentioned earlier in the series today, Carl Radel played with Delaney and Bonnie. And this is, this is a tune... It's actually written by David Porter and Isaac Hayes called My Baby Specializes. So it was recorded as a Stax classic. But Delaney and Bonnie, they did an album at Stax with Duck producing the record called Home, which is just an incredible record. It's got Peace of My Heart on it, the great Jerry, Jerry Ragavoy song, and a bunch of other tunes. But um, this is Duck Dunn playing bass with Delaney and Bonnie on My Baby Specializes on a record called Home. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the back side.
So that about wraps it up, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to mention, you know, we took mentioned Memphis quite a bit in here. In the 60s in Memphis, there were three major studios happened simultaneously, 60s into the 70s. Stax, American, which we both represented here, and then another one called High Records, which had the Hodges Brothers as the rhythm section with Howard Grimes on drums, where all Val Green's records were done, Ann Peebles, Syl Johnson, Otis Clay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, a lot of great, great information and hope you enjoyed what we did today. We're going to close with a little live clip of Marvin Gaye's What's Going On with a little few close-ups of Jamerson. And everybody take care, be kind, practice love. Take care now. <laughs>